Willie B. In 1984, the Grant Park Zoo, where Willie B. lived, was considered by the Humane Society of the United States to be one of the worst zoos in the country. The animals were housed in cramped, dirty, and inhumane conditions. When some animals died and some went missing, a grand jury began an investigation into the zoo. According to former mayor Andrew Young, if it weren't for the zoo's star attraction, Willie B., the whole operation might have been shut down. In 1985, Mayor Young appointed Dr. Terry Maple as the zoo's new director. Maple took charge and made some big changes, including giving the place a new name, Zoo Atlanta. Dr. Maple knew that Willie B. drew a big crowd, but he also knew that Willie's life of solitary confinement was all wrong. I felt sorry for Willie B., Maple said. He was a big, handsome fellow, and he had to be the loneliest gorilla in the world. Soon after taking the job as director, Dr. Maple took an expedition to the Congo to see how gorillas lived in the wild. He returned from Africa on a mission, eager to make changes for Willie B.'s sake. Dr. Maple convinced a corporate sponsor to build an African rainforest at Zoo Atlanta. The new exhibit would house up to 25 gorillas in four areas separated by transparent walls and include an outdoor area for them. Just as in the wild, the gorillas would live in groups with one silverback, a few females, and hopefully some youngsters. On May 13, 1988, for the first time in 27 years, Willie B. was ready to make his grand entrance into the outside world in the newly finished outdoor exhibit. Zoo staff, visitors, and the media excitedly waited for the big moment when Willie B. would leave his home of concrete and bars for one of grass and sky. Willie B. stayed in the doorway of his cage for a while, cautiously peering out. He touched the ground a few times before he gained the confidence to explore the new territory. With his friend Charles Horton close by, coaxing him, and telling him not to be afraid, Willie B. took a few steps forward into the rainforest exhibit. His head remained statue-like on his massive neck, while he looked cautiously to the right and to the left. For the first time in almost three decades, Willie B. got to see the blue sky and the green grass and to inhale a breath of fresh springtime air. And yes, gorillas do see in color. Shutters clicked and cameras flashed, startling the already apprehensive gorilla. Charles noticed a strong odor coming from Willie B., which a silverback emits when he is alarmed or nervous. It's okay, Willie, Charles told him. Then the clouds opened up and rain began to fall. When Willie B. felt the strange sensation of raindrops, he ran back to the safety of his concrete box. Later in the day, after the press and the public had left, Charles once again coaxed Willie out into his new home. This time, Willie ran to a big oak tree and snapped off one of its branches. He dashed about the habitat. Then he went to the top of the hill and looked down at all of the land around him. It seemed to the keepers that he was claiming the land as his own, posturing as male gorillas do in the wild. The echo of clanking metal doors and the hum of fluorescent lights were now a part of Willie's past. After exploring his new land for some time, he walked down to the glass and sat, staring at his keepers. Although he was still alone, plans were being made to introduce Willie to a couple of female gorillas in the hopes that they would breed a new generation of gorillas. He had lots of land on which to roam, but he still sat by the glass most of the time, watching his visitors. After spending six months alone in his new habitat, the day came for Willie to meet two female gorillas, Katie and Kinyani. Their first date didn't go as well as some had hoped. 